Hiya then folks, welcome to Boating on a Budget with me, the tight Yorkshireman and me Dawn Here we are on our Project Narrowboat, Leander Lady the boat that we started building 12 months ago it's over 12 months we've been doing this project oh now no. and we are now revisiting one of the projects that we actually did quite a few months ago that being the bathroom because we kind of laid it out and we've got the walls and things in there haven't we and we got the toilet made yeah and then we kind of made what is going to be the shower tray but we've got to fiberglass the bottom of the shower tray and seemingly we're now experts at fiberglass well, we? we know having, everything there is to know about fiberglass yeah. <laughs> having repaired the roof and touch wood that roof's not leaked no, so we did all right perfect so we do now need to get on and get this fiberglassed because we're almost at the point where we're going to have hot running water as well as cold running water yeah so we can actually start using the shower on board earlier today though while you were at work because we must say this is in the evening we like doing night shift here yeah. aren't we it's nice though yeah give it a month or two and at this time it'll be pitch black then but yeah so a, a few hours ago while dawn was still at work i had a look at just doing the few modifications we needed on the toilet so everyone can be having a look at that while we get all the tranquilments set up ready to fiberglass can't we yep these are the components then to the compost toilet that we built a few months ago and have been using ever since but now we're coming to finish the bathroom off we just want to make the final tweaks and get all ready to seal into that bathroom once and for all there is one job i must do straight away and i've been itching to do for them last few months and that's get rid of this hideous white toilet seat white toilet seats are fine if you've got a nice clinical white bathroom we haven't as is all wood why ever don't bought this one i'll never know and it's even broken in the short time that we've had it hence why i had to put them screws in that is going straight on the fire i mean it's going straight for recycling we won't burn things like that next step i can get rid of the separator for now if you don't quite know how a compost toilet works i will put the link in the description below to how we actually made it and that does explain what you do with it i'll not bother going back through all the details of that now i'll let you have a look at that video after you've watched this one so let's move the toilet seat out of the way for a minute and lay this down how it will be so that's basically the toilet that's the back that's the front so let's turn it this way for now so you can see what I'm doing and just to show how it's gonna go that sits on there that's the little bit of trim at the back and then when we come to empty it this is gonna be hinged which I've got the hinges there for and it lifts up like that so we can get inside the bits that we're going to have to do today are this trim piece on the back needs fastening down properly that needs screwing from the underneath and then we need to fit a pair of hinges onto there so that the top can lift up so that we can get into it to empty it and then the final job put that new toilet seat on that's the bit i'm looking forward to the hinges that we're using then are called flush hinges and basically they fasten on there and they can open up that way and take up minimum amount of space on the back there if we were making a trophy cabinet we'd probably rebate them in so that they looked even nicer but for this sort of setup that's a bit over the top so the best way to line them up obviously that's how they're going to sit so we need to make sure it's fastened to this one in the right place so although we're going to have it set that way if first off we flip it there and snug that hinge up we know it's sat right then measure it the right distance away just gonna have it about three centimeters away from the back get a screw and now pilot that in and get the next screw and do the same i now know when i flip that round that hinge is going to go in exactly the right place so now let's screw them on the right way around you will know I'm using reasonably long screws here I want to get a good bite right through into the timber if I only use short stubby screws 
that's likely to be the weak point that at some stage they'll just pull the way back out. So with a couple of screws in each one, you can now see that means this sits nice and flush. Just a case of now screwing the other side of the hinge into the back of there. last screw in and I'm reckoning if I put that down it's not going to sit right yeah it's just not letting it sit quite level and that's because the screws that I've put in there are quite big ones like I say I want them nice and secure so it means the heads are ever so slightly too big for these so all I'm going to basically do is opposite there I'm going to put a little pilot hole with a wood drill bit same there and it'll just allow it to sit flush it's a little bit of a cheat but it does mean you can get away with using the bigger screws that you need to use and still have it sitting all nice and flush. A couple of clamps just to hold it roughly in place and then we can get some screws in there. finished ready to be reinstalled I suppose we better crack on with that shower tray haven't we have we got everything we need then yeah I'm just gonna make sure my timers ready yep because we'll need a timer shortly if you didn't see us doing the roof we will kind of talk our way through it so you can get an idea as to what we do first off though we need to put equal number of pumps from the resin and the hardener into a cup don't we yeah so we're gonna do five resin five hardener into each cup and start stirring it and to start with we'll both do one. Oh right, okay. Uh, you spoon upside down babe. Yep. So as you see there it's one full pump of each together so I start mixing that one. Oh okay. Other way around. You need to start your timer. So we mix it for two minutes. That means that it's a good homogenous mix, which again, another fancy word, that means it's all mixed together properly, <laughs> if you ask me and you. But basically, we're doing five pumps of each together, and then after that, as I'm starting to apply it onto the, um, to the shower tray, Dawn will then do a larger mix each time, but basically, so long as she makes sure she gets the even number of resin pumps to hardener pumps, you can mix as little or as much as you want up at the Which is a good thing, time. isn't it? Yeah. And because we've got those dispensers, it means you can't get the ratio wrong. No. You've, you're always going to get the right amount of hardener to the right it's amount of time epoxy. Time on, I'm on a minute. I have got all the matting already cut. I did that earlier. Um, got it all cut to sizes. And you will see we've both got gloves on. It is important to wear gloves when doing fiberglassing because it's burns yeah it, it burns i mean basically the way it sets is by it forms a chemical reaction between the hardener and the resin and the chemical reaction creates heat and in effect it sets it off so uh, so yeah gloves are essential two minutes is a long time when it's on the time it certainly it? is <laughs> You do only have about an eight minute open time on this stuff as well, yeah. don't we? So once we start mixing it, you've basically got eight minutes till it's starting to go off. When it starts to go off, you can't really work it, it anymore. So I'm about there, am I? In effect, what I'm doing first off is I'm just kind of priming the wood, if you like. So these first couple of mixers aren't really going to go very far, which is why then Dawn's going to mix larger mixers afterwards because they need to 
keep coming thick and fast. So as soon as I've got all this wetted out, as the technical phrase is, I can put the matting on top. And I've just realised this table creaks, so that's going to be annoying as that's creaking all the way through. <laughs> So that's got the bottom wetted out. So if I now get the first mat, which is cut slightly oversized to the bottom, so it does just curl up, which I'll then put some behind that, behind the, the corners where they curl up. Next one. The idea of this for anybody who's not seen before is well not had to be standing on this fiberglass. There's going to be what's called a duck board, which is basically just a timber board that's slatted so that the water runs through that we'll actually stand on, like a shower board, and then the water will run into the bottom of here and the water will be then be pumped out as a drain. And so we'll put links in the description below to where we made these originally and did explain a little more detail. But obviously as this episode goes on, you'll see how it's going together because we are going to complete the bathroom on this episode. Fingers crossed, anyway. And we've got a lovely smooth bottom. We like a lovely smooth we bottom, do, don't do, we? Yeah. So now I've got that on, I'm going to pour some of this in and get that spread out and wetted. While we wait for Dawn's next lot. I'm using the paintbrush to force all the fibres in. It's forcing the, the resin through these fibres. Once it's all fully wetted out, I'll get the roller on it and use the roller in between each coat. Got the special roller that's basically just metal fins rather than like as a paint roller where you would expect to see obviously a foam or anything. This is just metal that pushes it down, pushes any air around. How long we got with that one? Thirty seconds. But it says an estimate of two minutes. On it. Yes, so if it's you not, need it. It's, it's not, not an, an exact science. The two minutes. It is just basically what they're meaning by saying two minutes is you don't just plonk them together, stir them no. round, and then use it. You do need to make sure it's got a good mix. Which, as I say, they call it West Systems, who uh, who supply this stuff call it a homogenous mix, which I think is a fancy word for well mixed. So as I said, it's just a case of building this up now, step by step, and rolling in between. Again, for those who have not watched any of our videos before or not seen us doing the fiberglassing, we're not by any means claiming to be experts, so no, no. we knew absolutely nothing about it until we bought the boat and realised we were going to have to do fibreglass repairs and we've had a lot of people give us a lot of advice and help who know what we're doing. So. so there was a, a chap called Chris Brown actually got a little model boat, didn't he, and chopped a section out of the hull so that he could repair it and show us on a video. He did, it was lovely that, weren't it? Yeah. Do you want to stop that time, I think? <laughs> <laughs> I certainly do. We did sort of find the key to this, seemingly is, getting plenty of the liquid on. The resin, that is, sorry, not liquid, it's not liquid. Well, it is liquid, but it's resin. Um, yeah, you get plenty of the resin on, and then you really force it in. Make sure it's completely wetted through, so it's soaking right through into the fibres. I'm at a stage where I've done that one, so do you want me to carry on mixing that? You can be starting the next one. Yeah, that's your timer. So I've got about a minute left. Because we're probably about at the point where I want to be putting the next layer of fiberglass sheeting on. About it, come on. Right, 
We're not needing to come right up to the top. Because if the water ever gets that far up, we've probably got problems anyway. We're in trouble. <laughs> and the last thing we then need to worry about is whether it's fiberglassing came up. It will be trimmed round. that one off you to mix up myself and then I've ended up with it just sat there as well anyway. But never mind, we'll catch up. This is jo definitely a job of speed and accuracy because we need to do it quick but we need to get it right as well. Yeah Once they're doing these vertical sides is the first time we've really done anything that was or well, that is vertical, the rest of it was horizontal and it does obviously offer its own challenges because typically and obviously the resin tries to run down. Yeah, it's uh, just in a flat surface, it's finding its own level as well. Isn't yeah. It? We're doing alright I think. I think. We can only do what's best, babe, can't we? Alright. So on this back bit I'm getting it to stick to the actual siding. Obviously the rest of the timber we had already varnished. We've left this bit that we knew we were putting this on unvarnished so it would get a good bond and stick well. In a moment I'll get the roller and run the roller over it. Let's get all of that on and we will go and get that next sheet. Oh in fact now we won't. What do we need to do? We need to roller it. See as I'm rollering it, it's pushing all the air out and pushing the resin right into this fiberglass sheeting. How's your mixing arm doing? Alright, look at that. We'll look to be timing this about right because what's that got left? Nine seconds. You can have it. I can have it, can I? <laughs> you can have it. <laughs> I'll have it, babe. That all of it? This, uh, the resin, yeah. This little one's struggling a bit, so I'm going to do these as a perfect measure. Right, here. How many did you get into that one? Four. So is that the last one then? Just see, what I can get. see if there's any so more if to don't come. Work, then we'll not have yeah. it. So don't rely on it. No, nope. I'm giving full squirts. No worries. So basically, we're now working with the last of the resin. Yeah, because it's not going to mix perfect. I'm not going to risk yeah. it. Yeah. 
Like I said, the main thing I'm going to try and get then is get into all these corners. Yep. Get them all nicely wetted out. So I'm quite happy how it's gone. It's just a very different technique getting it onto the the sides than it was just working on a, a flat roof. It's so. going to do, isn't it? And it gives you something you can't. Because you've moved it up, you've been moving it away from the bottom, wouldn't you? Yeah, it's, uh, it's just working it into it. But that's it. I think we've uh, I think we've got it. Bit there. Yeah, and then I'm just going to work round with the rest of this, just forcing any last bits in. Like I said, I mean, it is obviously very smooth on the bottom here anyway, but that's not crucial because, like we said, we are putting that board on the top, but obviously, we want it as good as we can. And I wish I had time to stop and have my broom. This is your broom. Oh. Oh, that's just, drunk that's just double insulting. I haven't got a chance to stop. And Dawn's drinking my brew. We're going to have words here. I've earned it. Has there ever been a couple of a fight on YouTube? Not while covered in resin, <laughs> no, they are not. <laughs> as well use it up. Yeah. I'll get the roller on it. Just want to clear them out of the way so I can get that roller on the go and I just took him the tight Yorkshire lady then didn't you I? did Scrape it out of it now. Come on get every last <laughs> dribble <laughs> Somehow I seem to have managed to get some fluff in there. Sounds about right. You'll find one of my hairs. Oh, they're everywhere, everywhere well. aren't they? So I think the only, the only thing I've found is, like I say, it's kind of a bit bulked up in the corners. It's not causing any... It's, issue as such, it's just making it a little bit more awkward. You've got weird ones lapped on top of Yeah, and obviously I've kind of, in some places I suppose, I've got kind of eight layers of fibreglass where it's, ah, right, okay. you know, where the various different corners have all joined. Hey, ho. Yeah. Well, it seems to be all coming to the surface anyway, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it's a... Uh, I think it's doing the job it's supposed to. Time to take the roller off here. No, I'm just just doing my final bit of fiddling, just getting any any air out of this corner. I was just going to say, I think there's just one job left to do. And that's take the roller off you. And that's... Take the roller off me. You'll be doing that all night. And then we'll go and have a, have a cuppa and let this set up. And I'll see how tea's doing. Excellent idea. In fact, don't touch that, you ain't got gloves on. About half hour later then and tea's cooking nicely isn't it? It is. And this is setting up just as we want it to do. But we are starting to lose the light and we need to tidy up so that we're not cluttering the, cluttering the moorings up all night. So we'll put this to one side, leave it till tomorrow and we can crack on. Has it gone as you expected it to? Yeah, yeah I think it's gone alright. I, I had cut another sheet that I could have put over the top, another sheet of the, the, like the meshing. But I think two two is perfectly adequate. I mean, that's what we used on the roof anyway. Right. Um, and yeah, it's all kind of gone all right. So cool. I'm happy with it. Good, that's all that matters then. So yeah, we'll set it to one side. We'll leave it to dry. We'll carry on tomorrow. Well, so we'll carry on tomorrow. You will. I'll carry on sorting the bathroom out tomorrow while, uh, while you're at work. Yeah. Tidy up. Have some tea. I certainly will. So we've now skipped forward to the following morning. I've already took Dawn to work, because somebody's got to earn the pennies, I suppose. And I've got the toilet and the shower sat back in the right places. Obviously, the toilet's just exactly as it was as we built it up. 
The shower's now sat in place. There's not really a lot more I need to do to this until the actual water itself is on and running and we can test it properly. About the only thing to do is put some silicon sealant down the edges there just to make sure that's all sealed so as the water runs down it goes into the shower tray. You'll see behind this board here, if I just move that out of the way, this is where the pump is. In effect what's going to happen is as the water runs into the shower tray, the pump will detect that and it pumps the water back out. So as the shower's filling the tray up, the pump's pumping it out to keep the, the water out of there. That pump though only pumps out once the water level reaches sort of about a centimetre or so. So, so that we're not stood in there splashing about, like we said, we're going to use a duck board, which I'm going to build a nice one out of the same timber, the old school desks, to match in with all the shower tray and with the toilet. But again, until we're happy it's all working and we're not going to have to make any changes, I thought probably best to hang off making that. And my mum and dad have got this spare one that they had in their shower. So we're going to use that just to start with, so at least we can make sure everything's working right. So I think that about concludes our build of the bathroom area for now. It's just a case of waiting until we get that gas boiler on and the hot water running and we can try it all out for real. Hopefully then you've liked this video and you're already subscribed to the channel. If you're already subscribed make sure you've dinged that little bell. That gives you notifications each time we put a video on and that means you can keep following our project. So thanks for watching folks. See you later. Bye bye.